Alright, hi guys, uh, welcome to a new video. Uh, as you can tell from the title, I have decided that I will do a Ajing video. Basically, a, a video about Ajing today. I don't know if you guys can see this. We're having our Hokkien Mee. Oh. How's it? It's worth the rain. <laughs> worth the rain, guys. Max says it's worth the rain. Worth the rain, eh? You like more, or more pee, you know? Oh, that's true. So uh, just a little bit of background, a little bit about Ajing. Uh, what it is is actually downsizing tackle, um, general fishing tackle, downsizing it to match up with the fighting power and the sizes of Ajis. Now in Japan, which is where Ajing originated from, um, Aji is basically horse macro. The word Aji, A-J-I, is, called, is uh, horse macro. And fishing, so Aji plus, fi plus fishing equals to Ajing. Ajing is basically fishing for horse mackerel and it is I think I would say it's very popular in Japan um, and when it came to Singapore we matched up our tackle the Ajing tackle with sorry about that the uh, type of Ajis or type of fishes that we have in Singapore which is most commonly in seasons uh, we have the Salas which are the yellowtail scats um, Sela Papans, I don't know the English name for that fish. Um, I've heard of fishes like Mata Besa and Lorong being uh, said around. Uh, most commonly caught are queen fishes, queenies in general. Um, whether it's the needle scale queenies, which are the baby ones, or if they are the slightly above baby, which I would call the juvenile. So it had it's it, it's full size. It looks. It looks um, like a, a exactly like a queen fish with the five dots and everything. Just that it's not full size because it can grow very big. But the ones that I'm talking about are maybe about four pounds or slightly less than that. Anyways, um, aside from that, I think I will be touching on tackle now. So tackle generally comprises of rods, reels, lines, leaders, the jig heads, soft plastics that we use for Aji fishing um, and generally I would say all these stuff can be bought for a very reasonable, pri reasonable price but you also have to remember that if you were to stinge on certain things like line and leaders then then you have to be ready for for the quality of the stuff that you're paying for so the first thing I'll be talking about is rods rods like these this is an Daiwa Ajing X Okay, so I, I don't know if you guys can see this okay properly, but this is the Daiwa Ajing X Okay, this is a Ajing rod. Okay, it's rated for PE 0 0.15 to PE 0 0.4 It is also rated in poundage for 1.5 to 4 pounds Casting weight on this rod. I would say it's about 0 0.5 to 8 grams So aside from rods uh, generally, I would use something with, within that range of 0 0.5 to 8 grams. We, you want to be looking for, if you want the best experience out of Ajing, you want to be looking for something with a solid tip, something that kind of bends from the mid-joint instead of 
having a noodle tip. Why is that so? Because you get more sensitivity. When the Ajis take in the lure, they suck in and they inhale the lure and they, within a few seconds or milliseconds, they taste that these rubbers are not what they're after. They spit it out and that is when the spitting out is when you want to hook your fish. So you have to really be fast and generally fast or extra fast actions of the rod would be preferred. Okay, so the next thing about Ajing is reels. Okay, um, reels very simply is um, from 500 size to 2000 size. And generally you want to be looking for the models that say 2000S, 1000S kind of stuff because you get shallow spool reels and then you won't have to to worry about your lines weakening due to the knots being tight to do backing because generally your lines are really thin and you're using like really light lines also aside from light lines and very thin lines you want a shallow spool can allow maybe 1.6 pounds to to be spooled in with 200 meters or even 2.3 pounds uh, 200 meters of that on a 2000 sized 2000 s size reel next is of course lines oh and one more thing about reels you want to be looking at reels that try not to exceed 2 kgs or 3 kgs of max maximum drag okay the next thing will be about lines um, generally I prefer using polyester lines when I'm fishing on shore um, Actually, on boat also, I prefer uh, polyester lines. The only reason is because I, I, I noticed that my jig hits sink faster and, and it doesn't waste too much time getting to the optimum depth where the fishes are. Polyester cuts through the water much better and the strength of polyester is much stronger when it's in water than in air. Uh, I connect my leaders through a pinky knot. Uh, oh, and if you want recommendations on main lines, I'll leave it in a box, right? Here where my hand is okay um, leaders as well if you want recommendations it'll be somewhere right here um, mainly the two brands I use is 34 if you can see and the Unitica right here I will focus on that later okay if I'm using 1.6 pound main line all right I'll be using this joint line over here all right there we go this is the joint line as you can see 34 joint line 0 0.8 this 0 0.8 is what I call numbers okay this number is what I would pair with 1.6 pounds uh, if you look at 34 joint line you'll find that there's a 1.2 version 1.2 is basically what I would pair with 2.3 pounds those are the two main line um, main line poundages that I use 1.6 and 2.3 so 1.6 I'll pair with the 0 0.8 leader and then 2.3 I'll pair with the 1.2 leader. Occasionally when I do rock fish fishing, when I do uh, when I go to places and use ajing tackle without where, where I know it's it's a rarity to, to catch ajis, I would use leaders like these. Because these are generally cheaper than the 34 joint line. This is a Unitica night night game leader, fluorocarbon as well. It comes in 30 meter rolls. Okay, this is a four pound leader. This one comes in 50, 50 meter rolls. So those are for leaders. Okay, I generally use fluorocarbon lines, uh, fluorocarbon leaders to, to fish um, uh, arjing. Okay, so um, the next thing I'll be talking about is jig hits. All right, uh, generally you want to have something like this. Okay, a jig hit case. All right, this case is very important because it will go with you wherever you go when you do arjing fishing. And uh, over time, you would you would realize that you will be able to collect something like mine over here. But this is already very beginner. Okay, there are people who go around with two or three cases of jig hits to have a wider variety. So it's not just the weight that matters; it's the shape of the jig hit that matters as well. If you have a rounded jig hit, like say this diver down over here, can you see that? Okay, if you can see this, this is a zester diver down. Okay. Generally, this one I would use for Badok Jetty kind of places, Labrador, places with deeper water. Um, this slim profile will cut through the water much better. And it has a stronger hook, as you can see. It's uh, slightly, re slightly more reinforced. Whereas if you were to compare that to something like a Rocket Plus or Rocket Magic, as they would call it now, 
This is by Decoy. Okay, these are actually one of my favorite jig heads because I I don't know I can work anything with it. I can twitch it. I can lift and fall. I can straight crank it. It works. It always works. Um, so that's for the Decoy and Zesta jig heads. Uh, shapes matter. Uh, you may also want to consider getting some 34 jig hits like this one over here. I don't know if you can see it. This is the 34 diamond head. As you can see, the shimmer that's flowing from the light reflection. If you can see on my hand, there is a certain light reflection. This is what it will look like in the water um, if you're fishing on a sunny day. Okay, It will have shimmers around because it looks like a disco ball shape. I don't know if you guys can see that. But it shimmers around in the water, and that is what attracts the fishes to come and take the the jig hits. I mean the rigs, okay? Uh, apart from that, we also have things like a darting jig hit, something like this. Um, similar shape. I don't think this one darts very well, but this is a major craft jig para, I think. Uh, yeah, but generally, this these stuff, um, I do straight cranks with this to cut through the water. I also do um, bounce them, I do uh, lift and fall as well. Yeah, so these are the jig heads um, that I generally use. The The highest, the the heaviest jig head that I've ever used while doing some arjing is 4.5 grams. When the current's really strong, um, of course people will say they, would, they wouldn't mind casting out uh, against the wind, against the current, and then letting it flow back. But for me, I like to flick it out and I like to play a shorter distance but a deeper range. That's how I would play my Ajis. Uh, maybe that's why I don't get many Ajis as well. But anyways, other than jig hits, the, the main thing other than that is also if you're using snaps. Personally, I do not. Okay, I've tried them. I've tried using them but I personally do not like using snaps or clips because of the effect it has on the action or rather the presentation of the jig heads. Okay, next thing I'll be talking about is the worms or the soft plastics that we use. If you can look over here, if you can see over here, I'll use my face as a background, okay? This is basically the most use that I have. The, we, from, from the tip of the hook, we have the reins uh, ribbed straight tail. Oops, just came off. Oh, okay. It fell to the ground. Anyways, then we have the 34 Octopus 1.8 in black color. Then we have, um, this is an imitation Chimera bait. Okay, uh, I found it online and I decided to get it. The last one on the hook over here is a, this one is um, a Gomoku Soft Series bulky ring. The ones that I, on this hook right here, if you look at the two pink color ones, this one and this one, I don't really use them because these are slightly harder. These are the Giga Bijin um, worms. Um, what I do enjoy on this hook is the 1.1 Ale Uto from Island Anglers and also the, uh, this one is the Sagai Slapper okay, from Island Anglers. So generally those are the most used my most used worms uh, or soft plastics. All right, sorry about that. Technical difficulties, like I said, my autofocus is not very good. And um, so other than jig heads, snaps, um, soft plastics, leaders, lines, rods, reels, I also got questions like, uh, let me just pull up a chat that I have. One of the people that are in this um, chat room that, I in, that I'm in actually uh, took a snapshot of the web page that sells the Gomoku Soft Series bulky ring and he asked me if colors matter. So I think this is a very commonly misunderstood uh, area of, of any sort of soft plastic luring, okay? For one, if you are trying to find out about ajing fishing and you're trying to learn more, I would understand that you are interested to know what's the best color that works. Um, there are best colors that works, um, but it's also based on that person's personal opinion. Like if you ask me personally, I would tell you I prefer to use the black color octopus and the dirty brown octopus. And I would also tell you that the ribbed, the white color ribbed um, 
reins, straight tail, works very well for me. I can also tell you that um, the off-white and the grey prawn uh, island anglers colours work better for me. But in actual fact, it works well for me, but if you were to buy it, you might not face the same uh, outcome. Okay, So the best way, like what I shared with this gentleman, is to purchase your own range of colours. Um, personally, what I did was when I first started, when I first walked in into Light Talk Game, uh, I remember very clearly talking to Uncle Michael. And I said, I know there are colours that actually work, but I have to test it out. And he said, you're right. So um, actually what I did was I chose my favourite colours first. So I chose pink colour, I chose a lot of different like transparent, translucent, dirty brown, and stuff like that. And then I realised that for myself, pink actually doesn't work very well in the areas that I fish. Okay, so like I said, the areas that I fish, you may face different different outcomes if you were to try pink. And I've seen people who have caught um, ajis and, and pelagics and, and fishes in general on pink soft plastics as well. Okay, so in general, do not base your colour choices of soft plastics based on what other people tell you. Right? That's the most important thing. And the second point is, for jig hits, do not... Um, just focus on one type of jig hits. Don't like, for example, 34 diamond hit. Oh, John says it's good. I'm going to buy 100 pieces of 34 diamond hit. No, you're going to be wasting a lot of money on that. So my advice to you is have a variety of shapes and sizes. Be ready to cut leader and change up your jig hits at any point in time of your session. You will never get a fish until you break the code for the day. Another thing that I saw people ask was the use of snaps and clips. Personally, I've tried them. I do not like them. Why? Because sometimes your jig hits can get, the, the loop of it can get really small. Example, like the diver downs. You see this very tiny loop? That is what you're tying your leader on. And most snaps out there, most clips cannot go through this loop. This is a 3.5 gram jig hit, by the way, which, if you think about it, 3.5 grams is supposed to have a larger loop, but no, this one does not have, okay? So my best advice to you, tie direct, it will give you a much better presentation of your jig hit and your worms. Apart from, from all these stuff that I've talked about, mainly this was what I was trying to share with you guys about Ajing 101, okay? Um, if you were asking about techniques and all that, don't worry about it, okay? Just do anything you want. You can twitch, you can, you can even... Uh, do a fast twitch, you can do a slow twitch, okay, you can do a fast twitch, you can do a long stroke, you can do short strokes, you can do a straight crank, you can even uh, straight crank and tap your rod with your finger, I've seen people do that as well. Um, there are many, many different techniques, you have to experience and experiment them yourself. Okay, honestly, I'm not very experienced in ajing, okay, I just love the game, and I, I, I do enjoy talking to my friends about it, I do enjoy fishing, with the Aji, Aji game, I do enjoy catching big fish with light tackle as well. Uh, another thing that you have that is very important, I cannot stress anymore on this part particular topic, is the practice of your casting. If you are starting Ajing for the very first time, I went through this as well. Okay, If you are starting Ajing fishing for the first time, you have to remember that polyester lines are not like braid they have polyester lines have memory it's similar to mono lines okay they have this thing called memory so if you keep from the factory all the way to the shop you have them on big spools like this it will remember this spool okay memory when you spool when the shop when the shop owner spools in the line for you it is trying to remember to the size of your spool, which is generally smaller. You're comparing from something this big to something that goes around something like this diameter. Okay, My advice to you, when you first spool your line, what I've noticed is that I would wait at least two to three hours. Best if you could wait one whole day before you go for your session. At least give about a day is the best for your line to remember the spool shape, okay, the shape of your spool. And when you're doing casting, 
don't expect to catch a fish on your first cast. That is the most important thing. You have to practice casting with polyester lines. Number one, it's much lighter. You put too much, if you put the line too far into your finger, you cast, you don't let go in time, you're going to snap your line at the very base of your rod. Um, similarly, if you are going to fish with arjing tackle polyester lines for the very first time, you have to be ready to get wind knots. I have gotten wind knots on the first cast. I've lost up to 30, 40 meters of line from wind knots, okay? Um, even line going back into my spool. Eventually, I have to cut off and then the next day, I have to go back to re-spool my line. All these stuff, okay? The convenient thing about arjing fishing is that everything fits into a very small bag. You can go around with a box, a worm box, or a dual side one box jig head case like this in a small bag or you can go like me jig head case one box dual side okay all these stuff play a part okay it's still very small uh, this lure boxes jig head cases are actually very 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 convenient I can fit it into any um, decent sized bags about this big okay and if you see this thing that I'm holding here, I researched it. I think it's called a pair of forceps, okay? These stuff have a longer neck, okay? If you can see, it's long and narrow. I can put it into the fish's mouth. Sometimes when they swallow, you don't hook, you don't always hook them on the top upper lip. Sometimes they swallow and you hook them when they're inside the throat. So you got to put the, the a piece of plier in to remove the hook. And most of the time, these stuff help me to do that job. So that's pretty much it about ajing fishing. I do not have that much advice I can give because, um, I mean, I fished ajing for about a year and a half now. I have spent quite a bit of time talking to people like Uncle Michael from Light Salt Game, Dixon, um, Ismail from Good Guys Fishing. Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've spoken to many, many people about it and they've given me a very, very good advice do remember to follow them on Instagram. I'll link them in the description. I'll also put them up here or here, okay? Do give them a follow. Do drop them a follow. Do subscribe. Do like the videos. Um, do give me a like. Do give me a subscribe. Um, do comment down below if you have any questions. I'll try to answer them in there. If you want to ask a question that um, for yourself, for your own benefit, you can always DM me on Instagram. My Instagram is here. You can always join Facebook groups, um, many, many Facebook groups. You can always follow on people on Instagram to find out more. Um, there are many ways you can improve. You can watch YouTube videos about ajing fishing. Even the Japanese videos have uh, really good advice. They have subtitles given there as well. Uh, if you would like to see more of more content from me explaining about ajing fishing and more content of me doing ajing fishing, do let me know. I'll try my best to produce more after the circuit breaker. So, um, if I've left out any important information about ajing fishing, do let me know in the comment section and I will try to improve uh, on my future videos. Thank you for watching, guys. I really appreciate your sitting through all the way to now. Also, just an update for the people who have ordered the JBL Fishing t-shirts. Due to the circuit breaker, um, production has been slower, it's been stopped for the company, so the t-shirts are already confirmed, 25 pieces have been sold, and the company has already recorded down the sizes, they are going to be producing and printing the shirts when the circuit breaker is over, and I should be able to collect the shirts within 7 days of um, the day that they start printing. I will update each and every one of you, uh, either personally or in a separate video as well. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for everything. I hope you guys drop a comment, drop a like, drop a subscribe. Don't forget to share. Um, turn on post notifications. I'm trying to post as often as possible now. And I hope you guys stay tuned to the next video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.